We need to talk storage. And I'm not talking about your cluttered garage or attic, but rather your data storage on your PC. What is an ultra fast, reliable and highly expandable form of storage? Well, stay tuned and I'll show you the way to speed up your transfers on your PC, workstation or Mac, and just about anything in between. Data storage on your PC can become technical really quickly with concepts like RAID this, DRAM that, bite the bit and on top of it all, you end up with a message that you choose to ignore for as long as it will let you. Checking those drives, you see a glimmer of hope in that USB flash drive, but it's so slow. Here is a solution for more storage space that does not use hard disk drives or SSDs, solid state drives, well, not in the traditional sense. Introducing the NVMe SSD. The naming is confusing, but let's just call it an NVMe or an SSD. Let me explain. The hard disk drive HDD uses a mechanical spindle to write data to a platter where the read write head magnetizes tiny areas on the platter's surface representing zeros and ones in binary data. And this data is transferred via the SATA protocol and transferred to the CPU and RAM when in use. Solid state drives are storage devices that use solid state memory, a type of flash memory, to store and retrieve data. The flash memory is called NAND flash memory, standing for NOT and logic gate, and it requires sending electrical signals or charges to memory cell blocks and pages, typically a few kilobytes in size, to represent data as a zero or one. And although SSDs are at least twice as fast as HDDs, the flash memory wears out faster, giving rise to SSD endurance rating, terabytes written or TBW. Now before you give up hope on finding that fix to your overloaded storage, let's check a relatively simple solution that can be adapted to almost any situation. Ooh except for those old floppy drives. We can't do too much about those. Races E Studios presents NVMe Adapter Shootout Quad Edition. That's right, we're gonna look at four different NVMe adapters. There's number one there, the Gigabyte Aorus. We got the HPZ Turbo Drive Quad Pro, as well as the Asus Hyper M.2 V2 adapter. And here are Four NVMEs, all identical, the ADATA Legend 800 2 terabyte. That's right, four NVMEs and four PCIe. Whoa, 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 there's only three there, you're correct. Where is the fourth one? Well, we'll find out soon. But for now, here's the Asus Hyper M.2 V2 NVMe adapter. Really well suited, we got a nice fan for speed control. And that's right, four NVMEs loaded into these. Next one, HPZ Turbo Drive Quad, a little bit of dust there. This is the Probably most expensive adapter in the lineup and likely the best performing, but we'll test that later on. This is the Gigabyte Aorus Gen 4 AIC NVMe adapter, which may be the fastest adapter here, but we don't know yet. Now, where's number four? That's right, I said four. Let's find the fourth adapter. But before we do that, let's check out the fourth adapter. There it is, bottom left corner. This is a slightly different entry, but before we do that, Let's quickly show you a solution for more SSD storage. Oh, check this out, SSD storage. We can fit four SSDs into this 5.25 inch bay and we'll save that for a future video. I know it's tempting, but we'll save it for a future video. Stay tuned for that one. Now back to the fourth adapter. Here it is. Let's do a quick unboxing and see what this adapter is. JE branded. Let's check it out. Now this one's slightly unusual. You may not have seen an adapter like this before. This particular adapter is operating on the U.2 interface, which is actually an enterprise grade feature that is usually reserved for, should we say, servers and or enterprise based hardware. But check it out, this looks kind of familiar because this 
U.2 interface looks really similar to the SATA interface, so what we find on our hard drives and SSDs. However, do not get confused, they are different. Check it out, there's the SATA hard drive for Samsung uh, 840 Pro, and we'll see the adapter looks really similar, minus for that middle indentation where there are extra pins on the U.2 interface. But normally, you'd have a U.2 SSD, or it's uh, NVMe, shall we say, that would slot into these U.2 adapters. Okay, but that's still not enough. How do we fit our NVMe? The logical option would be something like this, an adapter that converts the M.2 interface to U.2. And very nice to see the trace lines there. We have got full usage of that X16 PCIe slot. I believe this is actually a Gen 4 adapter, so it could be well worth using in some more modern machines as well. But we need to test them. Which one's the best? Which one do you need? Which one performs the best? There's so many things we could test. Things like speed, cooling, and power loss protection. There's so many different features that you may want from these adapters. Now we're gonna test them. First things first, we need to fit our NVMEs to each of these adapters. Now I'm going to take a bit of a shortcut and race our way through. Stay tuned for a future video where we go through each adapter in a little bit more detail. But for now, let's get started with the Gigabyte Aorus AIC Gen 4 adapter. This one's really cool. We got four slots, backwards compatible with PCIe 3.0. It's got a massive copper heatsink, which helps with heat dissipation, along with some thermal, uh, thermally conductive silicone. It's meant to be really easy to set up RAID and there's also some custom software to help you manage it, but very specific in terms of motherboard applicability. And yes, there's a nice fan on there as well, keeping this one cool. Price-wise, probably around 200 US dollars. They seem to be dropping off in popularity due to age, and there are some more modern uh, examples. But nonetheless, I'm currently using this adapter for my uh, video editing. It is a great adapter. Now, next one here, the Aces Hyper M.2 V2 NVMe adapter. Now this particular adapter is specifically designed for the PCIe 3.0 interface. There are, or there is a more modern version of this as well for PCIe 4.0, so check that out. And other special features on this one, we do have thermally conductive silicone, a nice aluminium uh, faceplate, which helps with thermal conductivity. And overall, very compact design and probably one of the cheapest ones here. Take note, all of these adapters will require bifurcation check out one of my related videos for that one now next one hpz turbo drive quad pro nvme adapter now this one has to be the standout one in the list definitely costs the most and is quite exclusive difficult to obtain yes don't forget like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the content so far stay tuned so much more to come now check it out very quick footage here in the background as i mentioned you will see a full video on each of these adapters in the future so if it is too fast there's a reason it's going to be in a future video but check it out this particular adapter is really cool because it's well suited to your hpz 440 640 and 840 and this particular one is designed with power loss protection so there are massive capacitors there to retain some power when power cuts okay here it is the u.2 interface the jhe adapter this one's a little bit unusual but really keen to test to see what the thermals are like and the speeds it's a completely different interface still adapting to the M.2 NVMEs that we know and love. But let's have a look at this adapter. So still four slots. It's meant to be PCIe 4.0, but backward compatible with PCIe 3.0. Supposed to support RAID. And I mean, who knows which, which adapter is going to be the best. That's pr a pretty intense lineup. Now we're going to take the ADATA Legend 800 NVMe. This one lacks DRAM. But nonetheless, very capable and actually pretty well priced NVMe with decent endurability. Now, where are we going to test all of this hardware? Well, all of it's going to go into the HPZ840 workstation, my personal machine that works really hard to produce all of this footage and everything else. Pretty, pretty cool. Check out the features there as well. Definitely got lots of videos relating to all the hardware. Don't judge the hardware protruding from the case too uh, harshly. That is a 10 gigabit. NIC, Network Interface Card, just floating around underneath the GPU. I know, it's really cool. Check out a future, oh, check out a related video. Now, in terms of speed testing, that's what we're here for. Which one's the best? Well, I did a whole bunch of tests. Blackmagic Design Disk Speed Desk. ATTO or ATO Disk Benchmark. Also did Crystal Disk Mark. And two real life file transfers. So a combination of 4K video files, 80 gigabyte, give or take. 
transfer that across and a quick mixed file transfer as well around 1.3 gigabytes here's the black magic design disk speed check there's the ATTO disk benchmark again this will be covered in more detail in the future quick snapshots here crystal disk mark now all of this testing was done with hardware info running in the background recording the data we're going to look at this data very shortly and there's a quick example of the transfer speeds there as well stay tuned for a future video where we look at that in more detail as well but for now let's check this data really really keen to see which of these adapters is the fastest cast your votes now this is a tough one my gut feeling would be the Aorus because I've been using it for two years it better be the best adapter but that HPZ turbo drive looks good and I'm kind of questioning that U.2 drive that might be a bit of a sleeper let's find out next time yes I'll show you next time I'm not going to do it now don't you love a cliffhanger oh downloading data ah oh, space game I love these space games let's check this out okay I see enemy spaceship coming closer oh dear that's a bit of a glitch wait let me blow on the cartridge that usually fixes these problems sorry give me half a second wait was this this floppy drive never mind okay fixed oh that's better fix the resolution as well oh man this is intense I heard some really dangerous invaders on this particular level. Okay, those look like little satellites. It's okay, we got this, no worries. And uh, you're wondering, what does this have to do with NVMe adapters? I have no idea, but apparently we just saved the universe. Well, that's great. Let's quickly jump back. Nothing like a quick break from some pretty intense learning. Okay, bootloader, thank you. Oh, well, I'm sure we put in a floppy drive now to CD. Anyway, let's go for data. Yes, NVMe testing. First things first, test conditions. So this is all fitted into the HPZ840. We fit each adapter into slot six, which is a X16 PCIe 3.0 slot. Now, in order to run each of these adapters, bifurcation had to be activated in the BIOS. That's X4, 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 X4 bifurcation. So splitting that 16 times lane into four samples of X4 connectivity. Now each of these NVMEs, this is the ADATA Legend 800s, two terabyte NVMe drives, were fitted into the adapters. I set up one RAID pool, it's a RAID 0 stripe pool, and for RAID 0 what we're trying to achieve is taking all of those NVMEs and literally zipping them together as one big drive. Why would you want to do that? Speed! It's all about speed. It actually massively increases the speed, or at least that's what I've seen online. So fingers crossed we can reproduce those tremendous speeds. But the idea is you're writing to each of those drives a small sample of your data, and it's meant to create a little bit of a speed improvement. Makes sense. Using four drives instead of one, that has to be faster. Okay, so that's the first graph. We've got our data. We've got a clear winner. Check out those temperatures around 33 degrees just under 33 for the hpz turbo drive quad pro that's really impressive and not what i expected i really was expecting the gigabyte aorus to come in with the lowest temperature 48 degrees and take note this is the drive temperature not the hotspot. we'll look at that on the next slide but there it is that's pretty impressive 33 degrees ish and 48 for the gigabyte aorus that's so definitely higher than i expected but that means that hp quad uh, Pro is doing really well at thermal management, a very effective system they've des designed or developed, exactly what we expect from HP. Now the next one's interesting, the Asus Hyper M.2 V2. That one came at 51 degrees. Being the cheapest adapter in the lineup, that's actually a pretty impressive result. And lucky last there, the JE Quad U.2 to M.2. Not too surprising that this is the hottest adapter. There is no thermal management on this adapter whatsoever. We do not have thermally conductive silicone. There is no fan. And uh, to make things worse, there's not really much of a heat sink either. However, check one of my related videos. We've actually taken a related JE adapter, added in some thermally conductive silicone and massively reduced its operating temperature. So much so that it nearly matched that of the Gigabyte Aorus. So this could be a viable solution here, but speeds, we want to know the speeds. And in fact, that's only the drive temperature. Let's check out the next temperature of interest, which could only be the hotspot temperature. Now hotspot temperature is going to be taken from a controller on the NVMe itself. So it's the same thing here. We take all of the NVMEs, we pull the data together and we plot it onto a graph. 
Now I had another question which was, okay, what these these are those quad adapters. What about like a single adapter and maybe a different NVMe? Because I have the boot drive. So for comparison, I included the boot drive. This is a Samsung Knight 980. You'll see it in sort of a pale blue off on the right hand side of the graph. And it's sitting at 63 degrees. Okay, this is the hot spot temperature. So the hottest possible temperature recorded on that NVMe. Now the next thing of uh, really big importance is how this data was collected. Well, all of those speed tests were run from start to finish. And this is the data looking at the entire span of all of those different uh, test conditions. So this is the highest temperature recorded by Hardware Info throughout the entire test. And check it out, 63 degrees on the boot drive sitting in a single adapter with little to no thermal management. Okay, so not great. The JE uh, U.2 adapter actually did slightly better on thermals than I guess your standard adapter. So that's interesting. Maybe there is a little bit of airflow there, bound to be some good push from the Noctua fans that I fitted uh, to help with hard drive cooling. But check it out. A related video would be hard to find, but there it is. Okay, next one's the Gigabyte Aorus. And the temperatures there were pretty solid, very similar to the Asus Hyper between those two for hotspot. If anything, the Gigabyte did relatively well on the hotspot temperature. So that's quite interesting. The drive temperature average is quite high, but overall the hotspot temperature is pretty well maintained. So that's a good result. And going for the HP Z Turbo Drive Quad Pro, check it out. 41 degrees Celsius was the hottest temperature, uh, which is a pretty solid result. So again, HP Z Turbo Drive taking the podium position on temperatures on your NVMEs. And take note, if your NVMe climbs much higher than about 75 degrees Celsius, it begins to thermally throttle itself. So mm, not great, but that's a really good temperature, good for durability. Okay, next graph of interest could only be speeds. We want to know the speeds. How fast are these drives working? Here it is. This is the average speed, the average max read and write speed for each NVMe fitted into these adapters. Now we've done the average between the four and it turns out between the four NVMEs, because they're sharing the data, we're actually going to see a lower speed than what you would normally obtain on these drives. So in this case, looking at the data, we found the peak speed was around 2000 read and 2000 megabytes per second write for both the Asus Hyper as well as the JE Quad adapters, which is pretty pretty solid uh, performance. The, the the one that's a bit surprising is the Gigabyte Aorus. The one that I thought would be the fastest has come out the slowest. No matter what I did in the RAID 0 configuration, it just would not budge. It got stuck around the speed. So I don't know, maybe it's a bit of a conflict. Maybe it's not managing the RAID well enough, or maybe there's a bit of a problem with how it handles the uh, shall we say conversion from Gen 4 to Gen 3. Not sure. Something's cooking. It didn't quite work the way I would have wanted especially because I've been using it for two years. I need to make a bit of a switch here by the looks of it. But this is it. The data is very clear. We had top performers. The HPZ Turbo Drive, although best in thermal management, came out second best, or maybe third best, in the speed category. We'll call the other two a tie. But there it is, about 1700. Now take note, this is the speed on each NVMe. So if we pull that, because we're doing four drives, surely we get a higher speed. You want to see that graph? Let's switch to the next one. Check that out. Okay, pretty impressive speeds for PCIe 3.0 on a HP Z840 workstation. Let's go through this. We'll start with the slowest, the Gigabyte Aorus. That was very disappointing to see. We got 3,570, give or take, read speed and 3,500 write speeds. Very similar speeds between those two. And uh, take note, this is pulling the speed of four NVMEs across the entire test conditions and it's been averaged according to the data that was obtained. So, wow, that's quite quite impressive data, but that's definitely slow relative to the others. So Gigabyte Aorus has let us down in this case. Maybe it's faster on a Gen 4 interface, but the HP Z840 does not have Gen 4, nor does the newer HP Z840, the uh, Gen 4 uh, Z8. So, oh, this is tough going, tough going. But let's check out the next one, the HP Z Turbo Drive. So pretty much what we expected from the previous graph came in third place with pretty decent speed, 7,000 read and about 6,800 writes. So that's not too bad, but check out the other two. 
the Aces Hyper M.2 V2 and the JAE Quad more or less tied it up. We'll call it a tie, but if you really want to get technical, I guess the Aces Hyper took it by a small margin. 8,000 megabyte read and around 8,100 megabyte write. Wow, that's really unexpected. And considering all of this together, that more or less implies that the best adapter here is the Aces Hyper M.2 V2. That's well timed when uh, Aces is getting a lot of uh, bad rep. Check this out, this adapter is the fastest performer and it's pretty solid at thermal management, coming in more or less second best on thermal management. So I guess that's my conclusion. That's going to be the best adapter for your HP Z840 and maybe all your HP related workstations, specifically designed for PCIe 3.0. That's pretty cool. Okay, well done. Hopefully you enjoyed that data. That was a really intense run through. Take note, there will be future videos where we go through each of these adapters in a little bit more detail. So stay tuned for those. And yes, don't forget, like and subscribe. That is the actual end of the video. And take note, the cool space uh, figurine, shall we say, came from AI. Check that out as well. Well done. See you on the next video.